If you've ever been in a situation that you're working inside Windows and needing to rename stuff or batch rename them, batch resize them, we often start looking all across the internet for solutions because Windows itself doesn't really have some, you know, efficient tools, if I could call it that way. For us who are used to maybe working in DOS way back in the day, we go out to DOS and do a, a rename Stardot and whatever extension, but that's not appropriate. So. For those of you wanting to do batch processing specifically for high volumes of things, I used this in a project where we were doing thousands of photos and had to rename them. We had to resize them for viewing and everything on the day. And this is an excellent tool, which is called Fastone. Okay, so you can get Fastone from fastone.org. And the one we're going to be using now is Fastone Image Viewer. I'll do a video uh, later on Fastone Capture, which is a brilliant tool. Fastone Viewer has so many functions, but the key ones I want to show you today is the batch processing, processing of uh, renaming and resizing. And it's got really tons of other features which are very valuable. So let's look at a image like this or a folder structure like this. Um, and let's open up Fastone. So if we go to the, let's, oh, by the way, I'm, I've got music here. If I go into a music folder, you see it shows the music files here and I can preview them. So you can preview music and videos. You can listen to them, play them through here. Um, so it's besides an image viewer, you can li literally listen to MP3s through here and you can look at a video clip through here. So it's just a, a preview for those two. But if you don't see the actual MP3 showing up, it might be that your setting is not correct. You go to settings, under settings here, you'll see under the tab video, often it comes default support audio formats are switched off. If I click OK, you'll see it's not seeing anything in this folder. So you've just got to go in there, settings, video, click that check box on. Okay, and here you see use internal media player. That usually by default is on, else it will open up an external media player. So I'll say OK, and there we can see the files there. So we see that if I go to videos, you also see videos and you can do a preview by clicking on the video. It will start playing and you can fast forward just to check it out. So it's just a, a viewer and I think it's phenomenal because then you don't have to click on videos and it opens up in every other application. This would be your go to application to preview stuff. But mainly let's get back to the pictures. Let's say I want to get in here now and I've done this already I was busy renaming these but say these files I want to rename to something else I could literally if I just want to rename four of these files I keep shift down and make a, a sort of a multiple selection of them and then I right click on it and here you see it says rename I can press rename and it brings up this dialog box now this dialog box can be accessed from the menu also and that's often where we go through. There are also shortcut keys for that. So these are the four files and I can take another file and add it, etc. But I don't know what this file is all about. So if I look here, I can click thumbnails. I can see the images. What is on the right is what we are going to affect going forward. So if I want to do all of these files, I can just clear this out. And yeah, I can say add all and pulls in all of these files. So if we look here, there's a sort button. I'll leave that exactly as it is. Now, I know if you're looking at this, you're probably getting a bit of a, a, a panic attack because how do you know how these things work? If you go to the right here, you'll see this question mark. If you pop that open, that gives you descriptors and examples of what can be used there. Okay, so in this case, maybe we're going to call it BT prop. So it's going to rename all the files BT prop. And I've put in there dollar d for day dollar m for month dollar y for year and that number is the number of the file over there okay so that that's what i've put in here and that's how to rename you can start renaming at maybe a hundred if you have done this already for a previous number of images then case change you can decide the name must be all in uppercase or all lowercase or don't change it leave the casing as it is there the preview here is if you wanted to look at any of these images just briefly over there. And if you wanted to see what it's going to look like before you click rename, you click on renaming preview to bring up the dialog and show you the old name, 
the new name. So if you're happy with that and you see the names look appropriate there for you and the renaming is looking good, you close this dialog and then you can go to click rename. Remember here it's going to rename it and leave it in the same folder that you are renaming because all it's doing it's renaming. It's not uh, changing a format or which this other tag will do change a format or sizing that it will need to either overwrite an existing file or send it to a different folder. In this case you're taking the original files and renaming it. If you want to rename a file but keep your original file names then make a copy of these files, put it in a different folder and then rename them there. Okay, so if we're going to rename this now, I'm going to click here and you'll see how fast this happens. So it says, are you sure you want to rename the files in input list? If I say yes, this is what happens. That's the speed at which it's going. So it's literally processed 90 images, changing the names. Say done and you'll notice here all these files names have been changed. So I'm going to just for the sake of uh, completeness here, I'm going to say Control A to select all of them. Um, and then I will press, what is it? Remember what it is there? You can do rename F2, it will jump automatically there. And I'm going to just change this to Baron and Townsend. That was its original, I think. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Click rename. Yes. And there we've renamed it all back to those. Okay, so that's that's how we do the bulk rename, which is the simpler of the lot. Let me just show you, as I explained earlier, if I wanted to rename all of these, but wanted to keep the originals. What I could just do is go to the, maybe into the Baron folder, right click and say, add a folder. Let's go here and say new folder. Yeah, we'll add in a new folder. Let me just call this temp and press enter. You see it creates a temp folder. Then what I can do is click here, control A to select all. And then I can right click and I can say copy to folder. And it's going to ask me which folder. I'll browse to the destination folder, which is this one. I say, OK, copy. It's copied it across to this folder. Now in this folder, I could then select all, right click and rename to whatever. I'm going to just call it B and T. B and T. Rename that. And there we go. So in this way, now I've renamed it in this folder, but the original folders still have their names. So that's what you can do is if you want to keep the original files for some reason, the naming, you can do that. Now I'm going to just delete this folder, right click on that and delete. Okay, so how do we do it if we are going to not select the files here, but we are going to go through our menu on top here? Well, pretty much it works exactly the same. If I'm on that folder, I go to tools and I say batch rename. It will pull it all up here. Now only the file that I have selected here comes in here and I can do exactly the same and say add all. Um, it says Baron Townsend exists in the list. You want to replace it? I'll just say yes because it's the same file. And then we go through the same procedure over here. Okay, so I, I would say if you want to go via menu or by selecting all, that's your preference. So the next one we're going to go through is the batch conversion tool. Let's go now and see how we can modify these. So say we have these image properties again. I'm going to take this one and right click and a new folder. Let's call that temp. What I want to do is resize these images. So all these sizes here are 800 by 800. So I'll go to this folder, go under tools. I'll say batch convert or I can press the F3 again. And I'm going to take all of these files. So I'm going to select all of them. Okay, I don't want that temp folder. I'm going to just remove that. Okay, because I want to put the stuff into that temp folder. Now, if we start here, this is the file formats we're going to convert to. We will leave it at JPEG. If the folder is going to be different to the one we're working out of, we're going to make sure we check this here and then browse to that folder. So we want to go to 
that folder and the subfolder temp. So let's go into pictures, pictures, parent property, temp. So OK. So it's going to output the fo photos in there with whatever modification we have. So I want to now use advanced options. If I click that, there's another dialog box here that's going to pop up. And if I click in there, it gives me all of these features. Usually it comes like this and you see nothing. You've got to check the box. So if I'm looking here, I'm going to say, OK, we're going to go. You've got all of these options here and I'm not going to go through everything with you, but say you want to have the long side being let's say 800 pixels and you're keeping aspect ratio is preserved etc you can come in here and do all your other settings print size by percentage by pixels but i prefer using the uh lank zos 3 uh, algorithm it works just very nice keeping the quality going and then once you have a setting if you want to save the settings here you can save it and if you want to load it next time you can bring it back there but I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go rotate. Again, rotate. If you enable, you can do whatever you need to. Crop has all those features. Change canvas size, color depth, adjustments. Yeah, you can do adjustments. If you click preview, it will show you a bit. But it uses just one image as a sample. So I really don't use this much because I want to do the image alterations on their own. A DPI that would be for printing purposes. Uh, text when you go to watermark this is where you can add a watermark. You could just go in and say let's choose maybe a different image here. The general let's choose OBS logo and I've got to size this logo it's a bit too big not a bit to be quite a bit big. Um, Let's see where we can size it. Can I size this image or do I have to? It's on the bottom right. Offset. Okay, opacity. Okay, for now I think it looks like we've got to bring in this image on the exact size that we need the image to be. Uh, still got to fiddle with that a bit. So that's the opacity and border. This is you can apply different borders, frames and so forth. Okay, but I don't want any of that. I'll put the watermark there and we'll take it at that let's say okay so now that is going to be a resizing to 800 for the longer side um, do we want to rename the files uh, we can do rename and the size conversion in the same dialog we don't actually have to even go to batch renaming so there's duplication in between the two you just decide which is best for you so I said I'm not going to uh, no, I don't want up your case in the naming. Keep original time and date. Yes. Ask before overwriting just so that I know I'm not making a mistake by inadvertently writing over the original. Display error messages. That's just if you want to troubleshoot afterwards. So if you click on yet, it's going to give you a sample of the images. This is the original. This is the resized one. Let's close that. If you're happy with that, you know we're going to convert to this folder. Now I'm going to open that folder so we can see what's going on there where was it this one here in temp but now say convert i'll pull it up there you can see they're all popping in there this is actually in the windows dialog so what it's doing now is it's changing the sizes down optimizing the sizes and while it's doing it's transferring it to a new folder so this is what I used it for with a sport event. It's literally as we loaded the cards, the visual cards, it downsized it, renamed it, and then I could then transfer it onto the other computers for viewing. But the file names, the file sizes were much smaller for previewing, and then the original stayed on the server. So if we say done there, let's just go look at that folder, see if our watermarks have come up. Yep, so the, as we browse through, you see the watermark has come up there. Now, of course, we, if we spend a little bit more time, we can sort out the watermark to be more of what we really want. This is just to show you how we are able to, in that batch processing, resize the image, put a watermark on. And of course, if we wanted to rename it at the same time, we could have done it. So I would recommend that even if you 
renaming things and you want to not convert anywhere, you know, you'd, you'd basically need this one dialog window if you go to the batch processing because the renaming feature exists there already. Uh, so this would be my go-to place, batch converter. I seldom go to batch renaming because all those features do exist with the batch converter section. So that's how you do your alteration and modification of files, sizing them down, renaming them, placing them in separate folders or overwriting existing ones. Hopefully this has been of help to you that you might be able to batch process all the images that you have. And take some time to look at the other video where we cover the other features, just generally give you an overview on it. Uh, Fastone is an incredible program. I think it's something that should be part of every Windows user's uh, interface so that you don't have to load up 101 other programs to, you know, just view images or resize or rename four or five images. You've got to get special programs. This one does it all and it's totally free.